Let's all rise, please. Just running by, gave me five old minutes. I am fixed 
Thank you for being here today. Your presence um, testifies to the fact that God is good, Amen. God is present, and it also speaks to the fact that when a life is lived well and strong and goodness and love, even if that life is for a short time, it touches many other lives. I am Reverend Kathy Myers, and I join with Pastor Art Inslee in giving you thanks on behalf of the Vandiver family, in offering your respect, your love, your support, and your comfort. Hear these words as we gather in the presence of Christ. 
Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Evan Reed Vandiver put on Christ, so in Christ may Evan be clothed with glory. Here and now we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when Christ appears again that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Again, we gather to praise God and to witness to our faith and to celebrate the life and faith of Evan Vandiver. Hear God's holy word from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God always add God's richest blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding, and living out of God's holy word. The three candles that you see on the altar table represent the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In faithfulness, Evan lived his life in the Trinity. He embraced God in the mystery. He knew God as creator and Holy Father. He walked with Jesus Christ as friend and brother. And he abided in the Holy Spirit as the Spirit guided him into each day. Evan helped to bring a part of the kingdom of God here on earth. The tall white candle that you see here is called a Paschal candle. And it has been used in celebration in the church since about the third century. In many ways, it represents the pillar of fire that led the Israelites in the desert toward the promised land. It also represents the light of the world, which we know to be Jesus Christ himself. It is his light that we follow in this world every day, and it is his light that leads us all the way home. Today, the candle is lighted also in honor of the life, death, and resurrection along with Christ of Evan Vandiver. His sister, Abby, comes to light the candle. Would you please stand once more? Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us offer ourselves in prayer. O God who gave us birth, you have gathered us in and you sustain us in these moments and every moment. You help us to find a balance between grief for ourselves and celebration for the life of Evan. Evan lived his life in the goodness of your love. Holy God, you know our needs before we ask. Give to us your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, 
we may see the light of eternity ever before us. Speak to us your message of life and hope. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. Before you, our hearts are open, and from you, no secrets are hidden. We bring you now all that we are and all that we have. We give you praise for your presence. Holy One, you are the God who creates and recreates us. The God who laughs with us and weeps with us. God who walks with us each step of the way, carrying us when our strength fails. We gather today with hearts breaking with grief, with voices crying out words of lament. And so we ask that you would move in and around us. As we gather to remember Evan, be the shoulder that we cry on, the arm we lean on. Help us to see through the veil of tears that there is hope for life continuing. Gracious God, as mysterious and wondrous as you are, you are also a compassionate God. As attentive as a hen with her chicks, as tender as a mother with a newborn child, as watchful as a shepherd with a sheep, as protective as a father's warm embrace. And so we come into your presence with grief, asking that your Holy Spirit would be here to ease our pain. But help us also to know that Evan lived boldly and strongly into each moment of his life. He got as much out of life as he possibly could. And we celebrate those moments and we thank you for them. We praise you that we are a part of those moments in his life. We thank you for all that Evan added to the lives of those of us here and many, many more. As we release our tears and our anger, as we say our goodbyes, at least for now, Remind us that we are not alone. And remind us that for Evan, all truly is well. For he is back in the arms who created him. We ask your blessings upon our time together. And we ask that the power of the Holy Spirit be in our lives. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I'd like to add to uh, Kathy's thankfulness for this community. Uh, last night, and I'll talk about this more later, last night was amazing. And uh, for the last two months, this family has seen love poured upon them uh, day after day. And I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate the love that you've shown. And to this family, wow, the uh, I've rejoiced with you weddings I have danced not like Evan but I tried I've been with you present when you uh, brought new children into your family and I've spoke at your funerals and today I, I weep with you I feel like family and this community feels like family and I want to say thank you for sharing Evan with us I want to read from the obit and then um, we're going to invite Evan's brother and sister to come up and uh, to speak to you. And uh, I'd like for you to, to listen as this was written, as I read it uh, a couple of times over, and each time I, my eyes filled with tears, but yet my heart was full of joy, knowing full well that this young man lived his life, as Kathy said a moment ago, Pastor Kathy said, to the absolute fullest. And there's a great message in Evan's life. Evan Reed Vandiver, age 19, of Richmond, beloved son, brother, grandson, cousin, and friend, passed away on Thursday, July 13, 2023, in Osage Beach, Missouri. 
Evan was born to his loving parents, Gary and Pilly, Penny Holloway Vandiver, on January 22nd, 2004, in Kansas City, and they survive of the home. He is also survived by his brother, Ashton Vandiver, his sister, Abby Vandiver, niece, Kelani, Grace Vandiver, aunts and uncles, Heather Bauer of Baldwin, Dale Vandiver of Richmond, Sarah Forger, and John of Columbia, and his cousins, Lauren and Landon, Blair and Matt, Jake and Gabe and Drew and Grant and Luke and his grandparents, Mel and Mary Holloway of Richmond. Evan was preceded in death by his grandparents, Bob and Kay Vanover, his uncle Jim Bob Vanover and Aunt Kim Vanover, and his cousins, Logan Bauer. Evan completed his freshman year at William Jewell College in Liberty in May, studying business finance where he took great pride in earning a place on the college honor roll. Both semesters, he had also found a home at the Zeta Phi chapter of Phi Gamma Delta, where he made many special friends. In 2022, he graduated from Richmond High School. Evan was an outstanding achieving excellence both in the classroom and on the athletic field. He excelled in track and was very proud of running the anchor leg of the Richmond Relay team that won the state 3A state championship and in, uh, it was in the 4x200 in two, 2021. Evan loved all the sports, especially football. He loved, number one, he loved wearing number 21. I can tell you that. Like Uncle Gabe, right? Cousin Gabe. And running the ball from time to, he was very young until he was old enough to play for his hometown Spartans. Some of his happiest times were spent on the football field with his teammates highlighted their journey to the Class 3A state semifinals when he was a senior. In his free time, Evan loved golfing. He loved playing at Shirky Golf Course in Richmond or being with his family at the Lake of the Ozarks. He enjoyed spending his days on the boat, ending every evening hanging out on the dock with his favorite people, his brother and his sister. Humble and kind, Evan was best described as the fastest kid with the biggest heart. Evan was known for his kind soul and his dazzling smile. He lit up every room he was in with a bright spirit with his dancing. He was adored by virtually everyone who had the pleasure of knowing him, but especially his parents, his siblings and grandparents, cousins and friends, who will miss him terribly. We will always love our sweet Evan, forever young in our hearts at 19. Ashton and Abby, would you all like to come up, please? Hi everyone. Um, first, on behalf of my family, I want to make a note to say thank you to everyone for being here and for the outpouring of support from our community and beyond. I've thought a lot about what to say during this speech for the last few months. There are absolutely no words to authentically describe the short life our little brother lived. His story was cut incredibly short. That is something I'll never understand. While there are a million things I could say about Evan, I want to focus on the things that made him who he was. Evan was a lover. He was kind to everyone who was lucky enough to know him. I always envied this about him. He was constantly able to give this love to others without hesitation. This was even true when it came to me, his bossy older sister. I was going out this summer and asked him if he thought I looked bad. His automatic response was, Abby, God made you perfect just the way you are. You're an athlete and you look strong. Evan genuinely wanted me to feel content in who I was. He wanted me to be happy because he loved me so much. Sorry. I remember when I first asked him if he liked Hayden. His response was similar to the first story. Yeah, he's really cool, but I would like anybody you like. I just want you to be happy. What a sweet soul he was. 
I would love to have watched him become a father. Evan was a learner. He loved to grow, whether that meant reading investment books or hyping himself up in the shower while I was trying to sleep. One thing I did not realize until I was writing this was having a sibling only a few years younger than you, especially living in a small town, I got to experience so much of Evan's growth alongside him. I watched him play football every Friday. He escorted me in the homecoming parade, and I got to go to track practice with him every day, also known as he got to smoke me in a foot race every day. I think one of the things I'm most grateful for is that I got to watch Evan be mentored by the same people I had been mentored by and loved here in Richmond. I was lucky enough to watch this continue on for a short time at William Jewell. I was so happy Evan had decided to join me. I now see it as one of the greatest gifts God has ever given me. Even though it was only for a year, we got to be together. There was one specific reason why I really wanted him to be a jewel, the people, and he got just that. The same things continued as they did in high school. I watched him grow alongside people I love and people he also grew to love, including his huge crush on my best friend, Kenzie. <laughs> I will never forget the feeling I had in my stomach when he joined the same fraternity as all my friends, my extra brothers. I knew my little brother was gonna grow and be taken care of. I was lucky enough to be able to watch some of my closest friends take him under their wing for one semester. I just wish it could have been longer. The most important factor I want to focus on is Evan's happiness. I can confidently say, even without him standing right here, that my baby brother was happy. He was happy in a way that each of us aspired to be. In all of his 19 years, I could not tell you a single time that Evan was in a bad mood or said that he had had a bad day. Rather, he was open about his happiness. No matter what life threw at him, he found ways to be a happy person. He found ways to be kind and pour his happiness into others. He did not care what anyone thought of him, and he was confident that he was made in God's image. I know where Evan is. If there are two things that I know for sure, they are this. Evan would want me to feel, and the right thing to do is pour into people who are hurting. My mom said, it is strong to hold yourself together. It is strong to smile. It is also strong to fall apart. Evan would want everyone in this room to feel, especially those he loved most. He is right there with us. Exodus 33:14 says, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. While I do not know why there is sorrow in this world, I do know that there are a lot of people hurting. What I have learned from this, from this heartbreak is that the right thing to do is pour into people. Go toward people who are hurting and do not run. Evan, you never leave my mind. I feel like I have so much left to do with you. I would give up everything to walk with you one last time, to ride on the boat with you one last time. But I will forever live through you and work to be the things that I love most about you. I'll pour into others, I will love hard, and I will dance all the time like no one is watching. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to start by saying thank you. I'm really grateful for each and every one of you here. Um, you all mean a lot to me, and your outpour of love to us has been phenomenal. Evan is my best friend. He's the person, the person that I'm closest to. And without him, I'm a completely different person. Unfortunately, I'll have to live the rest of my life without him, but I won't stop thinking about him. Without my brother, it's hard for me to see much of a future. It's especially daunting to think about the football games, holidays, and countless other events that he won't get to be a part of during my family's future. Now, it hasn't done me much good to think about these things over the last 67 days, but here's some of the most important lessons that my little brother left me with. My brother made me stronger. Whether it was him inspiring me to go on a run with him or getting a lift in, he wanted to improve, and his drive for getting stronger was unmatched. There was nobody who could keep up with him, and he could run for hours without stopping and still beat you in a foot race, regardless of how tired he felt. And right after he beat you, he danced in your face just to let you know that he was also a better dancer than you. <laughs> in everything we did together, we competed and we had fun doing it. I loved to play catch with him in the front yard when we were little, and I especially loved seeing him improve rapidly as a ridiculously frequent golfer. In the most recent years, Evan and I spent most of our time together playing golf, and we consistently talked about all the courses and places that we wanted to play together. 
I don't honestly think there are very many PGA players that commit as much time to their game as Evan did to his. My brother made me laugh, not just like a little bit, like a lot. He made me laugh all the time, and I know that's true for each and every one of you guys, too. Sometimes he'd shoot me a glance or do something wildly inappropriate that would just get me to smile, and even when I tried to hold back. He would make the dumbest jokes that would leave you on the floor unable to get up. And if you thought he was done after the first joke, you had another thing coming. Evan would make a joke so many times that as soon as you thought he was done with it, he would say it 69 more times. <laughs> Not only did he make me laugh, but his laugh was one that you could hear from a planet away. His loud, occasionally obnoxious cries of hilarity would obscure everyone's attention around him. And before you knew it, you were laughing too. My brother made me courageous. He made me want to be myself more. He dared me to stop caring what others think and to truly be who I was. I know he had this effect on a multitude of other people as well, and he was relentless in letting others know that he was there by dancing wherever you went. Evan would sing at the top of his lungs to whatever the song was, and his playlist was extremely puzzling because he would feature artists from Polo G to Kenny G. But the polarity of these genres didn't really matter to Ev. When I asked him why he had so many different sounding songs on one playlist, he said, Bro, they're all such a vibe. You just got to chill out. <laughs> Never in my life have I met another human being that could announce such a perplexingly wonderful character. My brother made me smile. Evan was unusually ticklish. And Kalani and I would take advantage of that because he would laugh so hard for so long that you thought he might actually pass out. His infectious laugh triggered the whole room to laugh too. More than anything, he gave me reasons to smile about life and about dull situations. He would always say, don't worry buddy, you got this. I believe in you. You're the goat. <laughs> he would say this line anytime I was in a rough place mentally or just when I needed to be reminded that light will always overcome darkness in our lives. Evan was the light in all of our lives. And while the world may seem darker today as we lay his body to rest, I still have a feeling he's watching over us and will continue to do so until we get to see him again. Since this all began, I found myself smiling and laughing more than crying. And I'm not sure if that's the love I've received from my friends and my family or my brother reminding me that no matter what, he's got me. And I love you, buddy. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Seen my share of broken halos, folded wings that used to fly, and they've all gone wherever they go. Broken halos that used to shine, broken halos that used to shine. Angels come down from heaven just to help us on our way. Come to teach us, then they leave us and they find some other soul to save. I see my share of broken halos. Folded wings that used to fly They've all gone wherever they go Broken halos that used to shine Broken halos that used to shine Don't go looking for the reasons 
Don't go asking Jesus why We're not meant to know the answers They belong to the by and by They belong to the by and by I've seen my share of broken halos Folded wings that used to fly And they've all gone wherever they go Broken halos that used to shine Broken halos that used to shine Broken halos that used to shine You know, last night, I uh, started with this earlier, and I'm going to start with my message with this, in that I witnessed hundreds of people that came here that came with something in mind, and that was to take just a little bit of pain off of you guys, to show you love, that I believe truly was a reflection of how Evan had loved them, and how this family has loved so many. It's interesting, as a pastor, I will tell you, we are called to a lot of different circumstances, a lot of different events, a lot of different times in people's lives. We, as I said earlier, celebrate with marriage. We celebrate new birth of life. We mourn and weep together when someone passes. And never, ever is it easy. I will tell you, my heart is broken with yours. However, there's always a reason. There's always something that comes along with it. And last night, as I watched people come through this line and, and hold this family and love on them and smile with them and cry with them and shed tears with them, I wasn't sure where I was going in my scriptures. I was praying and I was sitting in the back and I was blessed because God had seen to it that at Penny's birthday, she had received letters from friends and from family members that spoke about Evan. And Penny, because she's so gracious and so awesome, allowed me to take pictures of those, and I sat back here and I read those letters one at a time. And my scriptures still didn't come. I had a pouring of, of scripture in my mind, and Every time I'd read a new letter, and by the way, if you wrote a letter, I've got to tell you, every single one of them, I could tell, came from your heart. I read letters from cousins who told stories that I'm not going to repeat here. But you could tell that they enjoyed life together. I read letters from good friends who talked about adventures, who talked about his smile. As a matter, matter of fact, almost every letter that I read talked about how Evan could walk into a room and absolutely bring that light, no matter to what circumstance. That smile of a, a mouthful of teeth that was brushed up to six times a day, I read in one of the letters, was so bright, and it wasn't just because of the teeth, it was because of his attitude and his life. I had the opportunity to go to the hospital shortly, not too long after the accident, and speak with Penny and Gary and pray together and, and cry together and speak a little bit about Evan's life. But the time that I spent in those letters last night opened my eyes to a young man who the last time I spoke to was at his Grammy's funeral. He was sitting right here. And he was listening intentionally and intently as I spoke the gospel and talked about her life. There's a scripture in James that I want to speak to you first, and I'm going to tell you about a scripture that I've never preached at a funeral in my life, and it came to me very clearly about 3 o'clock this morning. 
In James chapter 4, young people listen closely, and people of my age listen closer. James says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in our arrogance, and all such boasting is evil. And this is where i, I, I got to hear these words, because therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him is a sin. And as I read that scripture last night, as I sat back here, I, that word vapor came up over and over in my mind. A 19-year-old man, young man, that lived 19 years, but I will tell you, as I read those stories and I've heard these stories, had more in his life probably than I do at 61 years. Evan lived every second to the fullest, every moment to the fullest, and it was packed with something that, that it was so evident, and that was love. The word love last night kept coming to my mind over and over again. People that came back and said hi to me we would speak for a few minutes, and, and they'd say, man, I love that kid. Man, I, I love this family, and, and if I could do anything to take this pain from them, I would do it. How many of us said that last night? How many of us said if I would do anything to walk again as Abby did just a moment ago in her speech? And as I, as I thought about it, and as I went to sleep last night, I, I didn't have my scriptures together yet. I wasn't going to go there until I was ready to go there and in the middle of the night I woke up and I and I into my mind came first Corinthians chapter 13 and that's I, I've got to tell you I don't preach it at a wedding and I've never preached it at a funeral but all of a sudden even though it's a mostly a memory verse it started pouring through my head I got up I took a shower I went into my office I sat down I picked up my Bible that I had with me last night, and right before I walked out the door, and this is one of those God sightings, I believe, right before I walked out the door, I had a pencil in my hand, and I just shoved it into the Bible so I wouldn't lose my pencil. Can't be without my pencil, right? I shoved it down into the, my Bible, and when I opened my Bible this morning, it was in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I can prove that because there's a huge pencil mark that I'll never erase. It's in my study Bible. I woke my wife up and showed it to her. And she wasn't very happy. It was still 3.30 in the morning. I want to read this to you. Because it says that love suffers long. Matter of fact, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and have all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to, the, to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they shall cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when we that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly. I'm going to stop right there for a second. There's been so many comments in the last two months that, about what is God's plan. You know, what is, what's going to happen next? And i got to tell you something, that if you'll go with me to these scriptures and you'll understand what true love is, what compassion is, what living a life with a huge heart is like this young man did, love makes a gigantic difference in people's lives. Evan, when I think of Evan, I think of love. 
I think of a young man who loved his life. I think of a young man who did all he could to be the best that he could be in everything that he did. A young man that, uh, I was talking to Gary and he said, you know, it's amazing, Evan didn't always excel in grades in high school. I can, I can share a little bit about it. Didn't excel. And he goes off to college, the hardest part of his studies of his life, and because he put his nose to the grindstone and worked hard, he got on the honor roll at William Jewell. Holy cow, that's amazing. A, a young man that took an opportunity, and this is where I'm headed today, is took an opportunity in all situations to show love and to make people laugh, to bring a smile to your face because that was his passion, to see you smile. A kid that got in trouble one time in football, he, he got in trouble. I don't know what he was doing. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. He got in trouble. And the coach said, I'm going to make you do whatever it was, wind sprints, I think we called them, or up-downs. It didn't matter. He said, okay, coach, whatever will make us better. You know, most people would take that as a burden. Oh, I got in trouble. I gotta, now I've got to do these wind sprints. Evan had a view of life that we should have a view of life, just like his. And I'm going to tell you, I think there's a reason that Evan had that. Number one, he had great parents. Number two, God created him specifically to know full well that when he walked into a room, he would bring that light. That he was going to bring joy into situations that were tough. Evan was a kid that this last part of this, it says when we see now dimly in a mirror, but then face to face, know it now in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of all is love. You know, I told you about a scripture a minute ago that, was, that talked about a vapor in our life. 19 years is too short. If we had a choice, we would have made that life much longer. But today, I want to talk about honoring this young man's life. You see, I believe because in chapter 8 of, and verse 37 of the book of Romans, it says that each of us, when we come to Christ, start to become the image of Christ in all things. I didn't know Evan personally. I knew his parents. I know his family. I never sat down and talked to Evan about his faith, but because I had an opportunity to read the letters that were written, I found out that Evan had a, a friend, a more than one friend, that they shared scripture on a regular basis. I found out that they prayed together on a regular basis. I found out that Evan knew the Lord, not because of his showing up to church, but because of the way he lived his life. You can sit in the pew all day long, folks, and that doesn't mean you're going to come to Christ. We say that a lot in our church. It's your heart, and it's who you conform to be not to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind when we come to Christ and when Christ makes a difference in our life. And I believe from a very young boy that right here in this church, when Evan knew who Christ was, he started to reflect Christ in his actions. And he brought joy, not just to you guys, but to everyone in this room if you knew Evan. A kid that got hit so hard one day in football could hardly get up holding his back. And the coach ran over and said, are you all right? And he started twerking. <laughs> you didn't think I'd bring twerking up in the sermon, did you? <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't heard me preach. <clears throat> right now, Evan would be tickled to hear you laugh. You see, Evan took opportunities instead of putting on burdens he shared burdens, but his way to get through them was to love you and to show that love in the best way that he knew how, and that was to make you laugh. You know, Jesus was sitting in the temple, and he had the Pharisees, and some people came to him, and they were scribes, priests, and they asked him a question. They were trying to put him on the spot, and when they asked him the question, they, they asked him which was the greatest commandment. Matter of fact, it was a scribe that asked him. He said, having heard them reasoning together, he said, uh, he asked him a question. He said, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus said, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord your God. The Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. In other words, your life should reflect your love for your Savior, your God. 
It said this is the first commandment. And then the second one, and here comes the part that I believe truly we need to hear today because I'm going to ask you before I say this out loud, what are you doing with your vapor? Not your vape, your vapor. Your vapor is the day that you took your first breath until the day you took your last breath in this place. Evan took advantage of his vapor. Evan took every second of his vapor to live life. Evan gave 100% in all he did. Guys, I got to tell you, as I hear this last statement that Jesus makes in this, in this part of, of Mark chapter 12, he says, the second one is just like if you shall love your neighbor as yourself, there is no other commander, commandment greater than these. You know, a lot of times I think that we look at someone like Evan and we, we want to be that person, but we just don't want to step out there. Abby said, dance like nobody's looking. A young man that brought a smile that cared more about his friends, I believe, than his, his own self. A young man that thrived. You guys did a great job. A young man that thrived to always be better, to always do better. So I'm going to ask you again, what are you doing with your vapor? You know, the greatest gift that ever was given to mankind, John says, no greater love hath this than one to lay down his life for a friend. I believe that Evan was that type of guy because he reflected Christ. And Christ went to the cross so that we would have a way to heaven, a way to our Savior, to be able to speak openly to God in prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me. When you accept Christ, Jesus himself told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. Guys, being born again doesn't just mean accepting Christ. If you're a Christ follower, today is a great day to take a new breath in your vapor. The Bible says that from the time a Christ follower takes his last breath, we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. You know, we have an opportunity every day to honor Evan in our lives. I was talking to Cast Cast Pastor Kathy and um, interestingly enough, she brought up a song, and I'm going to read this song to you. It's called Humble and Kind, and ironically, it's in his obituary. Towards the bottom, it says, Humble and Kind, Evan was best described as the fastest kid with the biggest heart. You know, a great way to look at our lives is how we humble ourselves before God, and kind matters. It makes a difference. You know, there's a light that glows in the front door. Don't forget the keys under the mat. When childhood stars shine, always stay humble and kind. I read one of our writers of the letters spoke about laying out on the farm at Grammys and Pawpaws and looking at the most stars you'd ever seen in your life from the hill of the feedlots up by the silos, I think it was. Get, visit Grandpa every chance that you can. It won't be a wasted time. Always stay humble and kind. Hold the door, say please, say thank you, don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie. I know you got mountains to climb, but always stay humble and kind. When the dreams you're dreaming come to you, when the work you put in is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and kind. Don't expect a free ride from no one, don't hold a grudge or a chip, and here's why, bitterness keeps you from flying always stay humble and kind when it's hot eat a root beer popsicle shut off the ac and roll the windows down let the summer shine always stay humble and kind don't take for granted the love of this life gives you when you get where you're going don't forget to turn back and help the next one in line always stay humble and kind one of the people either wrote or somebody that I talked to told me that Evan always loved to help the kids that were coming up behind him. Always hung out with maybe the folks that needed a little help, a little extra love. What are you doing with your vapor? Mine's changed. Since last night, my vapor changed. Let's bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, there's 
times in our lives, Lord, where, Lord, we just want to take a little bit of a pain from those that are hurting so badly. And God, that's a, a true sign of someone who has compassion for others. Father, you created Evan Vandiver in a special way, Lord, in a way that none of us will forget. And Father, I pray today that as we hear these words, God, we see this reflection of Jesus that, Lord, I have seen since the moment I started to open the scriptures and read. Father, as I read about this young man in his letters to his mother, God, I see a reflection of you. And Father, I thank you for that. Forgive us when we don't do that. Forgive us when we're selfish with our time and with our heart. Father, help us to be humble and kind and help us to remember Evan's life. And Father, we want to honor that life, God. This is not something, Lord, that we plan on forgetting quickly. So Father, today I I pray, Lord, for the moments that will come in the future where this family desperately needs you, God. And I pray for the hands and the feet of Jesus that bring you into their presence, Lord. I pray for the kindness and, and the love that would be shown to this family. So, Father, as we prepare now, Lord, to to hear a final song, Lord God, and to watch a video, help us, Lord, to be touched by this relationship that Evan had with all of those here. Help us to remember so much, so quickly, Lord God, that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever would believeth in him, Lord, would have everlasting life. Father, I pray if there is one here that doesn't know you, Father, that there would be a new awakening today and God, our lives would be changed from this moment forward to share that smile, that dance. Lord, to glorify you in our own lives. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, and we pray all of this in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, and all of God's children said, amen.
Evan danced boldly <laughs> and joyfully in this world. He did it because God gave him a song in his heart and a dance to be danced. His dance here on earth is done. But his love and his laughter his sweet presence, it's not totally gone because it lives on in you. Holy One, Elohim, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for Evan. Amen. Shines. 
Shine.